and welcome to day three of the Hindustan Times Leadership Summit. It's now the 19th year of having newsmakers from across the world join us to discuss current issues facing not just India, but across the region on a global scale. The theme of this year's summit is the new world order, and so much of that is about managing the pandemic and how to emerge from it with the world's best health experts and economists joining us. But the new world order is also about negotiating a more just world because, as we know, these difficult times have also increased all existing inequities. That's why our speakers today are so, so important. We'll have India's Foreign Minister, Dr. S. J. Shankar, joining us for a conversation and scientist Dr. Walter Longo, who will speak on the secrets of having a long life. But before that, it's now a privilege uh, of our uh, of the H3 summit to host uh, the former Chief Justice of India. And so it's over to my colleague Utkarsh Anand, who will introduce him. Thank you, Sunitra. Uh, welcome to the Hindustan Times Leadership Summit 2021. We have with us, and it is our privilege to introduce former Chief Justice of India, Justice Deepak Mishra. He was the 45th Chief Justice who served as the head of the judiciary for a little over 13 months between 2017 and 2018. Justice Deepak Mishra's tenure as the Chief Justice is remarkable in more than one way. When he was heading the bench, the constitution benches in the Supreme Court, several far-reaching verdicts, landmark verdicts, breaking new grounds and upholding gender equality, as well as the freedom of speech and expression, these judgments were delivered by the benches presided over by Justice Deepak Mishra. Not just that, he is he also he also earns the distinction of, of having presided over the highest number of constitution benches when he was the chief justice for that 13 months when we talk about the important judgments delivered by justice deepak mishra's bench there are several we can point out at least a few of them be it the whether it is lifting the ban on entry of women into kerala's shabri mala temple or decriminalizing adultery and homosexuality Justice Deepak Mishra has always stood for the gender justice and for the rights of people. Justice Deepak Mishra's tenure was also unique in more than one way. He always encouraged juniors. I happen to be somebody who covered his tenure as the Chief Justice of Delhi High Court and then as the Chief of the Supreme Court. His courtroom was unique in more than one way. His, he, was, he will be very patient. He will be very accommodating, but very firm and resolute when it came to upholding the rights of people of the country. All these judgments that Justice Deepak Mishra gave, they just point out to one thing, that he is somebody who has headed the judiciary with all the possible, uh, all the possible strength, and it was his tenure during which the Supreme Court could churn out several historical and landmark verdicts. It's a privilege for the Hindustan Times to host Justice Deepak Mishra. He is going to uh, talk on the changing dynamics of law and the new world order. He's going to focus on the constitutional rights of the people, as well as the online dispute resolution mechanism. It's time to hand over the podium to Justice Deepak Mishra, and we are very keenly awaiting for him to speak. Over to you, sir. Mr. Utkar Shanan, legal editor of Hindustan Times, Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to you. I must say, I am extremely delighted and feel complimented to associate myself with this summit. Mr. Utkar Sanan has already told you about the topic I am going to focus upon. It's the new world order. In the beginning, I would like to quote, and the quote reads like this, we are the new world order. We are the higher sun and the higher sky for a higher humanity. These are the beautiful lines captured with optimism by Thomas Stark in his book, Best reality, ultimate existence. Throughout human history, our society has been changing at a great speed, and the law has kept 
space with this metamorphosis with the aim to leap up to the distinctions that human race has been endowed with with every human stride getting into motion the dynamism of law springs up to encapsulate the new societal needs and bring about the necessary stability in the society just as the world was gazing on the 21st century the humanity witnessed a transformation that was a real turning point such changes acted as a kinetic impetus which not only assert in paradigm shift in the society through law but also in the field of economy and commerce the changes as time has witnessed have resulted in the creation of a new world order i do not intend to refer to any theories but i would like to accentuate the underlying synergies of international relations and the transformation that are taking place today there is a momentous evolution in international trade which consequently necessitates a broader canvas if one wishes to effectively appreciate what is going on in our world order at present while the world is still recovering from the fear psychosis caused by a covid-19 pandemic the burden has greatly shifted on the organizations having pan world reach to act as the building blocks to bring the world to normalcy it's quite evident that we are living in the growing age of commercial activity which is on the rise across the nations like never before this rise calls for directly proportional progress in the branch of economic and commercial laws in all major trading nations of the world to facilitate the process the rapid expansion of digital technology has made a monumental impact on commercial activities during the covid-19 pandemic we have switched to the digital environment which offers a global reach with infinite capacity and stupendous connectivity new and innovative business models have come up which utilize this ever expanding digital environment to maximize the gains by enhancing the market reach to adapt to the concept of new normal requires a great deal of effort it is to be remembered newer the challenge greater has to be the human effort not for nothing long back molier a famous french writer had said the greater the obstacle the more glory in overcoming it the new world order is bound to witness glory today cross border flow of services and technology require a new type of facilitator from the legal perspective with the global economy creating an interdependent and borderless world it would be fallacious if we ignore india's emergence as the world's most potential market where every big brand yearns to have its footprints the dynamic reforms that began in the 90s catalyzed unprecedented growth rates which were driven by a large and a young workforce and a growing consumer class initially i must tell you e-commerce which has been the most potent force in heralding the new world order stood limited to only self services 
what with the flux of time the logistics got involved with such services and the shift from just selling services to selling gadgetian products online came in known time as the consumers understood that e-commerce is more than a workable buying option with a predictable delivery time as we are talking about world trade and e-commerce transactions occurrence of disputes cannot be brushed aside in the emerging world order the significance of alternative dispute resolution mechanism has risen and covid-19 pandemic has enabled the disputants to take recourse to online dispute resolution system the present pandemic conditions have brought in private dispute resolution centers and courts around the world have embraced technology based approach and adequate protocols have been allowed entry to make video conferencing enabled participation in the proceedings it is in challenging times like the present that we can make innovations and use technology as a transformational tool i must apprise you in a situation of adversity one should never resign to fate but summon his inner strength as a representative of the human race none should accept defeat in natural calamities because such acceptance of defeat that amounts to abject surrender and loss of creativity and loss of opportunity faith in oneself and confidence in one's ability to remain in constant nowness makes each individual a captain of the ship of his life and enables him to metamorphose the calamity to an advantage and that is ladies and gentlemen character and that is a vow not to be vanquished the new arrangement in the form of online dispute resolution has to be embraced with an open mind the openness of mind to accept the idea would be the real adaptation of the new world order of course while saying so i am absolutely conscious of the fact physical hearings can never be substituted with digital hearing or video conferencing i have always maintained the stand that nothing can be a substitute for physical hearing however both can coexist to mark the manifestation of the new order since adaptation of the new technology has become the warrant of the time it will redefine access to justice which is a fundamental right under our constitution presently i shall advert to dynamic and forward looking constitutional rights that have been recognized under our constitutional framework the constitutional rights define and shape the life of citizens and the society in general their affirmative exposition and meaningful appreciation constitute the life blood of citizenry aspirations these rights become kinetic with dynamic vibrant and pragmatic interpretation constitutional rights have to be constituted and developed in such a manner that their real intent and existence percolate to the lowest rungs in the society that is the reason they 
for the constitutional rights, it must meet the marginalized. The emerging world order calls for a constitutional democracy to add on the expected role for effective implementation of constitutional rights. It is the obligation of the courts to see that rights are not even slightly affected or dented. The other wings of the state should understand the command under the constitution to implement the orders of the courts so that the constitutional democracy maintains its sacrosanctity. Absence of affectation is a positive sign of the new world order. The judiciary, while performing the most important function of being the final arbiter of the constitution, has acted as the protector of rights guaranteed under the constitution by embarking upon the journey of fruitful engagement. The legitimate expectations of a citizen under the constitutions have to be made and no individual, and I mean no individual, should remotely regard it as an object of chemical experimentation. No experimentation is permissible. It is to be borne in mind that the rights do not remain stagnant and confined. On the contrary, constitutional rights are ever growing, perpetually continuous, and embody a telescopic and expanded vision so as to enrich the future life of a citizenry. The nowness and the newness get into an inseparable wedlock. Constitutional courts in a meaningful democracy have assumed the role of ardent guards for strengthening the rights. This has set the process of judicial statesmanship and it has paved the path for the ascendance of rights. The sense of creativity is the order of the day and it is not to be marginalized by any competitive conservative perception. I repeat these three words, con conserv competitive conservative perception. With each passing day, the scope, extent, and the ambit of fundamental rights have constantly been expanded only to be compatible with the changing needs of the society. The courts have refused to adopt a narrow and a pedantic approach as regards the interpretation of the constitutional rights. The approach has become progressive, being aberrant to any regressive method. Now, I would like to share the dynamic and steady approach adopted by the Supreme Court of India for recognizing some of the most important fundamental rights. The discussion about free will and freedom bear a direct relation to one's right to affirm to one's gender identity. Towards the end of the last decade, the larger bench of the Supreme Court ruled over the issue of privacy. I do not intend to refer to the analytical spectrum of for various concurring views. What matters is that the right to privacy has been recognized as a fundamental right and expansive scope of Article 21 of the Constitution. The modern approach in the new world order scenario has changed the ambit of our human rights and there has been a perpetual shift among the citizens. Psychologically, every person has a desire to choose. 
but such a choice has to be within the constitutional framework and boundaries of law that withstand scrutiny. Thus, the right to choose and the right to self-determination have been recognized as aspects of human dignity. It's also emphasized that in some circumstances, like that of affirming one's gender identity, is an integral part of human dignity that will sustain the individuality of the individual. Non-acceptance of individuality affects one's sense of belonging to humanity. Therefore, modern constitutional thinking crafts principles that same-sex relationship is not a criminal offense. Live-in relationship is not illegal. A major has a right to marry according to his or her choice, and no one should intervene. The interreligious or intercaste marriages are to be respected if it is with consent. The Khap panchayats should be kept themselves at bay. No one can take law into his own hands and engage in mob lynching. A filmmaker or an author can express his ideas and a law cannot accept a provision to be valid if it had a chilling effect on freedom of speech and expression. Women who are, ent are entitled to join the National Defense Academy are eligible to permanent commission in the army and to establish an offense under Pokso, skin-to-skin contact is not relevant. Having said that, let me announce, being a citizen of the largest democracy of the world, I would like to highlight that the concept of transformative constitutionalism has kept our Indian constitution moving and active. Transformation as a single word is diagonally opposite of something static and stagnant. It denotes change and evolves in response to the changing requirements of the times. To give an example, a voter has a right to be informed about the criminal antecedents of contesting candidates and the responsibility of political parties in that regard has been clearly laid down by the Supreme Court. The Apex Court has issued directions and reiterate the same so that the voters can exercise their right in an appropriate manner. The compliance has to be dutifully done. There cannot be a deviation in such a spectrum. The world populace is adapting to the ways of the emerging norms and is moving ahead with the expansive approach to basic human rights. Therefore, there cannot be a static judicial interpretation of the Constitution for that would bring a kind of pathogen burden in the arteries of citizenry rights. There has to be also cultivation of mindset to welcome the new order and new ideas. Psychological acceptance should be the new norm. The vision for the future, ladies and gentlemen, should not be entrenched in the noise of the assumed negligence, but must be embedded in the refinement of logical wisdom and silence of the intellect. May I tell you without the slightest reservation that noise makes a society lose the substance and hold on to the evening shadow. In conclusion, I would like to say that the new world order shall not allow this planet to become 
a cactus land. The new generation, I'm absolutely indubitable, will not allow the path of progress to be paralyzed. They shall not permit any dent or allow any decay and move on the path of progressive purpose without giving any room to pointlessness. The new generation intend to subserve the idea of planetization and hold the universal goodwill in their hand and march on the path of constant awakening. There is no space for comatose. There is room for rise and awakening. Before I part, I must congratulate the Hindustan Times to arrange such a summit which really focuses on the new world order and makes everyone understand his significance, his importance, and his contribution to the entire humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, sir. It has been a privilege and an honor to host you at the summit. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Justice Deepak Mishra at the Hindustan Times Leadership Summit. Stay tuned for our next session with External Affairs Minister, Dr. F. Jai Shankar.